two GPUs for even more performance or a formula for a disaster? Well, let's find out. Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. Over three years ago, I did a video on exploring how to pair GPUs, which is not unusual in itself, but it was in my case because I was trying to pair two NVIDIA's GTX 1050 Ti's, which officially do not support multi-GPU technology, NVIDIA's SLI, but there was a trick on how to do that on an API-based level using DirectX 12. On that note, fast forward to today, I went in to check out if anything else changed since then with using AMD's Navi cards, because during that time, we only had one game that supported this kind of pairing. Back in the day, NVIDIA's SLI and AMD's Crossfire multi-GPU setups were something to wish for, something that would bring out the oohs and wows, but with time that slowly went away. It went away as all the moving parts in this chain had an on and off relationship between each other, because of which the whole experience became very iffy. Depending on the GPU generation, game, drivers and whatnot, the gaming experience would range from a pile of hot garbage to a pretty decent one, but bottom line it was really consistent. As single GPU solutions started to grow with their performance, with time people sort of lost interest or need in multi-GPU solutions, while manufacturers and game developers eventually began to drift away from it. I feel like removing the official SLI feature from the GTX 1060 together with the GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti represented the last straw, after which the multi-GPU linking technology slowly began to fade away. Back when that started, as I said at the beginning of the video, there was a game that supported pairing GPUs on an API-based level, Ashes of Singularity. Not only it supported heterogeneous explicit way of multi-GPU pairing, so that's without using any of the multi-GPU linking technologies, but it also supported scenarios where you could mix and match different GPU brands, so you could for example put Nvidia's GPUs with AMD's, the only thing that mattered is that they support DirectX 12. This possibility in the DirectX 12 world of development is actually called the multi-adapter feature and it's one of the rare examples you'll see it being used. I won't be mix and matching today like that, as I'm going to try my luck with pairing two AMD's GPUs from RX 5600 XT series and two from RX 5700 XT series, plus Ashes of Singularity was and still is a gem when it comes to that kind of pairing, no other game after that implemented anything similar to it, where you could put to work the green and the red team together in the same system for gaming purpose. I'm not sure if this is going to be an example of homogeneous or heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU pairing, because I am pairing two of the same cards, but technically speaking they are not linked with some proprietary technology, like Nvidia's SLI or NVLink, which is probably why AMD stopped calling it Crossfire, so one could say that this is an example of heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU pairing. Or maybe not, maybe it is homogeneous because of the same models, it does make sense in that regard, I'm not 100% sure how they apply this terminology in practice. Short after that little adventure, I didn't come across on any game that supports this type of heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU configurations, there just wasn't that much interest in developing such a game or showcase, although it showed to be very promising, but I assume it was just too much of a hassle to make them. On the other hand, around that time, we did see some progress in DirectX 12 multi-GPU support when it comes to AMD's and Nvidia's cards. For example, the Rise of the Tomb Raider received a patch which enabled that and which works flawlessly as you'll see later on. As with time, the official wide SLI and Crossfire support completely died down across the mainstream range of graphics cards, it was getting obvious that we had to rely on multi-GPU gaming being executed on an API-based level. This is where DirectX 12-based games that had built-in support for heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU modes started to slowly rise up, together with the same support within the Vulkan API, which came a bit after. So what does and how does any of this actually work? The whole situation around multi-GPU configurations is really weird to say at least, it's neither here or there, rarely anyone is actually talking about it, which is completely understandable considering with what we are left with. Although the Vulkan API above its 1.1 version does support multi-GPU configuration, it's still up to developers to actually implement it. 
For example, for a while we had some rumors that the 2016 Doom will have Vulkan-based multi-GPU support, and although it did receive an update to that higher version of the Vulkan API that actually supports heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU configurations, it turned out to be incorrect as it was never actually implemented, so in the end it didn't work as people tried to get it going. I even tried it myself and the only thing I got up was even worse performance than with using just a single GPU. As for now, the Strange Brigade was the only game that I managed to run in heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU mode within the Vulkan API, but that's also the only one I personally own as there are few other Vulkan based games that officially support it. Overall, the list of the DirectX 12 and Vulkan API based games that support heterogeneous explicit multi GPU setup is somewhat decent, more so if you look at it with knowing that certain versions of Vulkan and DirectX 12 APIs do support its implementation, but for ones who actually do work, there's little to no information on how they and do they actually perform, especially with Navi based GPUs. For some reason, there's very limited amount of information about this topic. For example, we just had Tom Clancy's new Ghost Recon Breakpoint that supports Vulkan besides DirectX 11 API, and there is no info on it if developers decided to use and implement the heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU feature, which Vulkan API by default offers. Well, I actually have a quick answer to this question as I got the game and tried it firsthand, and unfortunately no, it doesn't have it, at least not for now in this version, but maybe it comes later on, who knows. As I mentioned, the list is not that short, we have titles like Sniper Elite 4, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, latest Tomb Raider franchise, Gears of War 4 and so on, but since there hasn't been a lot of multi-GPU testing, in particular with the Navi RX 5000 series, I've decided to dig into it deeper and see how some of those actually perform. The thing that confuses me about this whole situation is the fact that these games still don't work out of the box, as drivers remain to have their part when it comes to actually enabling the multi-GPU setup. You still have to go into AMD's control panel and actually soft enable that feature so to speak, which they now call MGPU with this generation instead of Crossfire. It seems like it's still somewhat driver dependent on a certain level and not on an API only level like with Ashes of Singularity where you have to just tick a box within the game settings. I don't know if that's something that needs to be done on a driver level or is that something they just want to have control over. On the other hand, this then begs the question of how does this work on Nvidia's GPUs. Since Nvidia still has its own working homogeneous explicit multi-GPU linked environment, that being their NVLink and SLI technologies, there are a lot of games that still support it actually, they don't have a lot of newer gen graphics card models in lower tiers that have SLI support, so how do you get that working without the NVLink and SLI linking technology, but rather on an API level? Well, at least officially, that's not possible. It seems like Nvidia still wants us to use their linking technologies as a hardware bridge that's needed in order to have a multi-GPU setup. At this moment, I didn't have a pair of their newer gen GPUs to try them out in this scenario, but either way you look at it as far as I know, at least officially, it has to be SLI and VLink based in order for you to get the multi-GPU option. There's a sort of way to do that with using different SLI auto tool software, but I will leave that for some other video. Before I continue, if you're interested in checking out individually any of the cards featured in these tests, I'll put a link to that in the right top corner of this video. As I said, since I had a couple of RX 6600 XT and RX 6700 XT cards, I've decided to give it a go and see what kind of performance output will you get when you set them up in a multi-GPU configuration with their own counterparts. The setup for this is really straightforward, the only thing you need to do is to of course install the drivers and after that soft enable the MGPU option in AMD's Adrenaline software and that's pretty much it, as simple as that. So let's finally dive into the results. FutureMark's 3 d Mark and VRMark actually support multi-GPU benchmarking with their DirectX 12 based tests, that being the TimeSpy in 3 d Mark and Cyan Room in VRMark. As you can see I got around 60% of performance increase over a single RX 5600 XT GPU in 3 d Mark, while in VRMark it was almost half of that. With the RX 5700 XT it was almost the same, so that's somewhat of a decent scaling in 3 d Mark, but not so much in VRMark. I wouldn't mind seeing something similar to 3 d Mark results in games, and that was sorta of on what I've stumbled upon, except one anomaly. 
that being the Hitman, which instead of gaining performance, lost over half the original frame rate compared to a single GPU setup, both with RX 5600 XT and RX 5700 XT series. I honestly don't know what happened here, I've tried everything, different drivers, double check the settings, I don't know if it was driver or software related, I just know I couldn't get it to work as it should, although it officially supports explicit multi-GPU setups, you even have an option for that in the game itself. I'm sure it works with the previous RX 500 series, but seeing this now, it's possible it doesn't go further with the multi-GPU support after that generation. Oh yeah, and if you're interested in checking out this monster of a chassis, Fractals Defined 7, be sure to subscribe, review of it is coming out soon. Moving on to the other games, the multi-GPU scaling turned out to be of a mixed bag, but mostly leaning toward a positive experience. For example, in the case of Deus Ex with the RX 5600 XT, I got over double the performance gain, while the Strange Brigade showed to be well optimized also, as it was known to be from before, and it delivered some really good gains both with Vulkan and DirectX 12 API. Overall, the performance in games, considering the load they went under, was weird to say at least. The GPU-Z was showing substantial and constant load, all of the cards were running at close to 100%, one of two cards would maybe just lag a bit behind, I wouldn't even say lag, it was more of an oscillation to be precise. Bottom line, beside Deus Ex's outstanding multi-GPU result in 4K with RX 5600 XT series, which probably came in as a result of doubling the video memory size, on average I saw an increase in frames anywhere from 30 to 60%, which again, it's not something that will blow you off your feet, but it's still respectable. The biggest problem in this case is that it's hard to conclude anything sufficient, since it all depends on what game are you playing. I've also tried mix and matching the RX 5600 XT with the RX 5700 XT, it worked as it did in other scenarios, and I got roughly around 20-30% to of extra performance with adding the RX 5600 XT on top of the RX 5700 XT. It's far from perfect scaling, but it's cool to see that it works. Looking at the load curve and load consistency in the GPU-Z, for this particular case you can see that the RX 5600 XT is being completely utilized, although it was set as a second card, while the RX 5700 XT utilization is all over the place, it's like it let the RX 5600 XT do all the job for the most part, because it's a less powerful card, and the RX 5700 XT just tagged along and mimicked its performance. Unfortunately here I stumbled upon another problem, that being the Strange Brigade, but only using the Vulkan API, it would just crash right before the menu appeared. Besides that problem, generally speaking, the whole testing didn't go painless, for example the Shadow of the Tomb Raider would also completely crash, I couldn't even start the test, and I've tried different drives and systems, but thankfully the Rise of the Tomb Raider did work, so I managed to get some results out of it. Other games also showed to be pretty unstable, they were crashing from time to time, which is definitely not on anyone's wish list. The main problem in my opinion is that it can get very stuttery, accompanied by some screen tearing also. I wouldn't say that this was unexpected, multi-GPU setups and technologies aren't easy to deal with when it comes to that, now more so when there's no real interest in them. All in all, not a great experience, definitely not worthy of buying and making it your daily driver combination. The thing that started it all 3 years ago, again got its installation place on my test rig. The newer Escalation edition of Ashes of Singularity also supports DirectX 12 explicit multi-GPU setup, but I couldn't get it working at higher resolutions, it would just derp out on me, showing like 15 FPS result, no matter how many times I run the benchmark. I've tried running the previous version too, the one that I've used in my original video, but that one would just outright crash. Although many people consider multi-GPU configurations unnecessary, and that is true to a great extent, we are also missing out on getting some unique experiences when it all works as it should, and in some cases a great value for your money. What was cool back in the day is that you could just buy a last gen on the cheap, pop it into your existing PC with the same GPU, and get a pretty decent performance jump. Putting that aside, where I now potentially see multi-GPU configurations being useful is with 4K resolution, but not for your so to speak regular 4K 60Hz gaming, but rather for high refresh rate, 
120, 144 hertz or more, where we don't have a single GPU solution which can bring you that level of frame rate output with everything being maxed out. In conclusion, it's really hard to tell what the future holds in this regard, what will happen with multi-GPU solutions overall. At the moment, it doesn't look too bright, and until some special need arises, it's very likely to stay more or less the same. That's it for this time for me. Thank you once again for watching. Please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content. That really helps a lot. And if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe. And if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video. And until then, catch you later, guys.